Is there a formula for genius? One father believes he has discovered it, and he used it to raise all three of his daughters to be world champion chess players. Today, we'll discuss the great Hungarian psychologist Laszlo Polgar and his three brilliant daughters. Laszlo Polgar, a psychologist from Hungary, proposed to his long-distance girlfriend Clara, a language educator from Ukraine, in a rather unusual way. He wrote to Clara during their early courtship to describe how, through his methods of education and training, he could turn any child from any background into a genius. He did, however, have a significant issue, he was childless. In order to prove his theory, he required a lady who would agree to his marriage and childbearing. So he asked Clara to marry with him and she agreed, they were later moved to Hungary. Here they had three daughters and considered the fields in which they could train their children. They discussed languages, mathematics, and several other fields, but settled on the male-dominated field of chess. Once decided, they immediately began to execute their plan to mold their children into world-class players. Before he met Clara, Laszlo published a book titled Bring Up Genius, Neville Zenit, in which he laid forth his beliefs after researching hundreds of creative geniuses, including Socrates and Einstein. He says in the book that genius equals work in fortunate circumstances, geniuses are made, not born and was convinced that his theory was true. Laszlo and Clara then started their time-consuming effort after preparing their approach, tools, supplies, and subjects. The Polgars started their experiment in the late 1960s on the theory that any healthy child can become a genius in any field of athletics, science, or the arts as long as their education starts around the age of three and they start to specialize at age six. However, their work was viewed as controversial, and they encountered opposition from neighbors and local authorities. People said they were destroying their children, and the Polgars battled school authorities to win the right to homeschool their three girls. However, they persevered, and from their small Budapest apartment cluttered with chess-related material, Juja, Sophia, and Judith underwent their tuition in spite of opposition. In fact, it may have been that very opposition which brought them closer together and reinforced the girls' learning. Men had dominated the world of chess for centuries, but the Polgar girls were about to change things. In 1973 at age 4, Juja won her first competition and by age 15 was ranked one of the top women chess players in the world. Later she became the first woman to be awarded the title of Grandmaster via the same path that all previous male awardees are required to take. Third daughter Judith became a Grandmaster at age 15, making her the youngest person ever to be awarded the accolade. The middle girl, Sophia, although gaining enough points to secure the award, was never granted Grandmaster status, which some suggested was for political reasons. However, her achievements were nonetheless impressive, having been ranked sixth best female chess player in the world. By all external standards, Laszlo and Clara Polgar's experiment was a success. You might, however, ask at what cost to their three girls. According to the girls' reports from the years after, practicing and learning was enjoyable. They claim they never felt pressured to play chess, rather, they decided to do so out of curiosity. They also mentioned how their home had a really special feel. The level of the girls' immersion in the game was intense. Apparently, once late at night, Laszlo found his daughter Sophia in the bathroom with a chessboard on her knees. He told her to leave the pieces alone and go back to bed. She apparently replied, Daddy, they won't leave me alone. She and her sisters had become committed and obsessed with the game. According to Anders Ericsson's 2017 book Peak, How We Can All Achieve Extraordinary Things, Juja, Sophia, and Judith followed the same route as other high-achieving creative geniuses. According to him, an expert goes through three stages of development, from initial curiosity to fully developed creative genius. He claims that until the child reaches expertise, the process typically starts in childhood or early adolescence and lasts for at least 10 years. From then, it goes on. The expert constantly pushing the limits of their skills in a never-ending quest for excellence and the answers to pressing concerns. They eventually transcend not just their own personal boundaries but also those of the field to make a singular and significant contribution to humankind. The three phases of a genius development are described by Erickson as follows. Would you do what Polgar and his wife did so that your kids excel at a given discipline? Or was it that Polgar was utterly obsessed with chess and his theory and was prepared to go to extreme lengths to prove himself right? Please let us know your answer in the comment box. Thanks for watching, we'll come back with new video every Wednesday and Sunday. Till then keep learning keep growing.